turn with me, if you would, in your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 43. And while you're doing that, let me tell you that uh, our schedule is back to normal. So Wednesday night, we want you here uh, today at 4 o'clock, Christmas uh, practice. And uh, my inspiration of this is Brother George and Ninga. He's going to be in the Christmas choir. Isn't that right, Brother George? Huh? Wave at him. So I like that. He's a preacher, but he said, you know what? I'm going to sing uh, at Christmas. So we need, we need male voices, female voices, and my wife can tell you, but I'm expecting, I've heard the music, not all of it, but I want to tell you, you're going to hear one of the most beautiful musical presentations, and it's anointed. It's not just somebody who wrote, sat down and wrote some words to act out. It's music. It's anointed. It's going to be great. People are going to get saved. Amen. Let me tell you, folks, there is a new season that's about to break. I said there's a new season. And as we look at the scripture today, before we do, I want us to pray because uh, I was talking to Pastor Pedro just before I came out, and uh, his and uh, Rosangela's daughter, uh, Amanda, 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 forgive me, Amanda, she uh, is in the Navy and sent him a message uh, in Portuguese early this morning. Uh, I think it came at about 3 a.m. And although they don't know exactly where they are, but they're somewhere around the Sea of Japan. And uh, uh, where is Pastor Pedro? Is that okay to, for me to share this? Uh, and she said at 3 a.m. that the, I guess the, the whistles or whatever went off on the ship, which says that there's incoming missiles or a missile or something of that ilk. And she said, you know, she couldn't tell, tell more, but to pray because it is very, very dangerous right now. And folks, you know what is happening around the Sea of Japan. And I still, I, I'm amazed at, at how people take this in such a glib way that, uh, oh yeah, you know, maybe somebody will deal with him. Nobody is dealing with this man. And we need to pray that God intervenes Amen. and will ju just subdue this man because God can turn the heart of the kings as water in his hands. I want, I want us to stand right now. We're going to pray for protection. And we're going to pray that God would deal with that provocation. Because, folks, you know, I don't have to stand here and explain and insult your intelligence. You know we're talking about thermonuclear weapons. And it only takes one to obliterate a city. And we need God to intervene. We need God to intervene. I think it's great. Let's join hands. If you, if you can, if you're, not, if you're not near someone, that's okay. But if you can agree with that person, let's agree right now for protection, safety, and let's pray that this thing will be nullified. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for North Korea. We pray for our allies. We pray for Japan. We pray for Guam. We pray for all of those nations around that area. I pray, God, that you would speak to the heart of this man who is leading that nation. And I pray that you would give wisdom to our leaders, that they would not make the wrong decisions, but they would make the right decision at the right time. But Lord, we ask for divine intervention. Lord, let your hand intervene. And Lord, you can say this far and no farther. And I pray, God, that you would just put a shield around our people and the people who are in harm's way Keep them safe. Keep them from fatalities. And keep them, Lord, from some, some disruption like what we haven't seen in 60 years. Lord, we rely upon you. You are our strength. You're our protection. You're our strong tower. The righteous run in and are saved. We pray for Amanda. We pray for all of our sailors, our soldiers, every one of them. Be with them. Keep them in perfect peace. We pray in Jesus' name.
And all of God's people said amen. amen. You may be seated. I, I agreed when we put this together that, you know, we want this to be a celebration of victory because God has intervened. And as I alluded to earlier, we don't want to be like the, the nine lepers who were healed and then didn't even return to give thanks to the Lord for healing them. God protected us. And you and I both know for at least three days, we were bracing ourselves for a possible direct hit. And let me tell you, if, if we, uh, along the southeastern, southern corridor of, of Florida, were to hit a, get a direct hit, we would see devastation like we haven't seen probably ever with the condominiums and the high-rises and all of that at the kind of, of speed uh, and the wind gusts that that hurricane was, was thriving and, and was thrusting. It could have been devastation, but God. Amen? But God. And, well, let me read my... my chapter or my verses here Isaiah 43 verse 15 I am the Lord your holy one the creator of Israel your king thus saith the Lord which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters which bringeth forth the chariot and horse the army and the power they shall lie down together they shall not rise they are extinct they are quenched as a toe remember ye not the former things. I want everyone to repeat that with me. Remember ye not the former things. I love that. Let's say it again. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Can you say amen? amen. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my Praise. Hallelujah. Are we not the people of God? We are spiritual Israel. We've been grafted in. That promise is to us. And he says, I shall show forth my praise through my people. God's blessing is not just so you can say, wow, we got rid of that storm or got through that storm. We are to be able to show praise unto God who brought us through every tribulation and every trial. With God, there are no impossibilities. Don't you sit there and say, what I'm facing is impossible. With God, there are no impossible situations. God is looking for faith. And when he finds his people who believe and trust in nothing but him, God will intervene and God will do the impossible in your life. With God's people, there's nothing impossible. They can have, listen, they can have hurricanes lining up in the Caribbean like airplanes at O'Hare. But I will not worry. I will not be anxious. I will not be fearful because he who rides on the waves of the wind, who sits on the circle of the earth, he will intervene and he will provide for me. My God. I love that. I am the Lord, your holy one, the creator of Israel, your king. He's your king. And therefore, if he is our king, we are his people. And he said, I am the Lord. You know what? He could have just said that and that would have been enough. 
23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord, the Almighty One, Jehovah God, who sits on the mountain on the side of the north in his kingdom, he is my Lord, and he will provide. He will create something out of nothing. He will make a way in the wilderness. He will bring rivers in the wilderness and a highway through the waters. He will provide whatever you need. Listen, not based upon your righteousness, not based upon your good works, based upon what his son has already accomplished and through faith in Jesus, all things are possible. Jesus said, Jesus said, John 15, I am the vine, you are the branches. Folks, we need to understand something. You're not the vine. He is the vine, we are the branches. And as long as we are connected to the vine and we produce fruit, we will continue to be blessed and prosper. But Jesus went on to say, without me, you can do nothing. He didn't say you can do some things. He said, without me, you can do nothing. He is the creator God. He created a nation out of one man. He called Abraham out of Ur of the Chaldees. And he said, I'm going to show you a place where I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your offspring. You're going to be the father of many nations. Did God fulfill his promise? God never breaks his promises. We may break ours, but God never breaks his promise. And he says in verse 16, Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters. Can you say amen? amen. I love that song that we sing, and it's a verse. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I love that song. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And you know what? We shall condemn anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ when Satan tries to put thoughts of negativity and fear in my mind and tells me, listen, this is the end. You're going to be obliterated or you're going to lose your job. You're going to lose your ministry. You're going to lose this. You're going to lose your family. You're going to lose your marriage. You need to cast down every thought and every imagination and embrace the truth of his word. His word is true. His word is eternal. It never changes. The promises that he made are yea and amen. When you read a promise, you need to say, yes, amen. Praise God. It's going to take place. Why? Because he promised. And he is not a man that he should lie. And if he has promised you something, you need to stand upon it. He said, uh, the Lord who maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters. What is he talking about here? He's talking about when Pharaoh cornered them. And he even said, and I, I can actually read it to you. Let me just tell you what Pharaoh said about the people in Exodus 14, 3. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness hath shut them in. I've got them, he says. They're cornered now. They can't get away. Now, most of us would have said, Lord, soften his heart. Take Pharaoh's heart and, you know, melt it so he'll be good to us. But God says, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he sh shall follow after them. What? I'm praying that he won't come after us. I'm praying you'll melt his heart. He'll change his mind and go back because we're, we're cornered between the sea before us, mountains on each side, and the army coming after us. Lord, what will you do? I'll harden Pharaoh's heart so that he'll follow after them. 
And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord and they did so. You came after my people. I'll harden your heart even more so you will go and I will take care of my people and destroy every vestige of the enemy. Look what it says in verse 7. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. They, you know what? Pharaoh just wouldn't learn. He just wouldn't learn that God is greater. And God's circumstances, the circumstances that Pharaoh thought were in his favor, God would use as an entrapment to trap his chariots in the midst of the Red Sea. And after the children of Israel passed over and the chariots were deep in the midst of the sea, the waves came crashing down and Pharaoh and his army were all drowned. And God says, and I will receive praise from my people upon this. Can you say amen? Amen. When it gets dark in your life and you pray and it gets darker, it just means that God is getting ready for a greater glory of praise. You thought, well, if God will just answer right now, I'll give him praise. He's going to allow it to get worse So he will receive greater glory because then you can say, with man it's impossible, but with God nothing is impossible. Right now, right now, someone is sitting in a pew and you're saying, my situation is impossible. I can't do it. Pastor, I've prayed, I've heard you. You've talked about God providing. Well, I got news for you. He hasn't provided for me. Well, I got news for you. God's not done. You're still sitting here. And it ain't over. I said it ain't over until God says it's over. And let it get so dark that you can't see your finger in front of your face. It just means that God is getting ready for a glorious delivery. He's going to receive praise out of your situation where you say it can't get any worse, and it does. But God, but God, when we pray, oh, God, my situation, you know how bad it is. I don't see any uh, reprieve. I don't see any answer. I don't know where the money's coming from. I don't know where the provisions are coming from. Lord, it looks helpless. But God, but God, and some of you today, you need to understand Satan doesn't have the last word. The doctor doesn't have the last word. Your banker doesn't have the last word. Your lender doesn't have the last word. God has the last word, and we are his people, and he will take care of every one of our needs. Every one of our needs. Today, you need to be rejoicing. This is a time for celebration. This isn't a time for us to play some morbid tune and act like it's a funeral procession. It's time to celebrate and praise God for what he's done and what he's going to do in your life. Hallelujah. The best is yet to come. I said the best is yet to come. You say it's been pretty good. It's going to get better. You say, well, I'm not complaining. It's been pretty good. Well, I want to tell you, it's going to get better. Told the two early services, today's the 17th, so in four days, and my math is terrible, but in four days, you'll wake up, you'll get dressed, you'll go to your car or, or wherever you work, maybe it's in the home, your computer, You won't even realize it. 
When you walk out that door, get in your car and drive to work or wherever you're going, you will have entered a new season. It's called fall. It's called fall. Is that right? September the 21st is fall. Most of us won't even remember that it's a new season. But I'm telling you what the scripture says here. Listen to me. He says, verse 18, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Verse 19, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. It means a new season is coming. What you have lost, what has happened is in the past it is behind you. Let it go and do not remember it any longer. Hallelujah. You don't need to keep looking back at the problems, the offenses, the hurts you've had over 2017. Oh, Pastor, if I could just tell you all of the hurts and pains I've had, you know what? Tell God. But don't look back. You know, I was driving around yesterday and I came by the church and, you know, I've been over through most of Boca Raton and you see all of these big heaps of, of, of rubbish of old broken trees and limbs and leaves and all that kind of stuff. And every time you see it, you think of Irma. You think of the hurricane. You think of lack of electricity or whatever it is, lack of income or whatever is associated with it. Now, if I understand this scripture correctly, where he says, Behold, I will do a new thing. And he says in verse 18, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Doesn't that mean forget the past? Now, I was telling early services, we've been back in the house. We were at my brother's for a night or two, and then at my son-in-law and daughter's house for a couple of nights, and then our electricity came back on. And so in the back, uh, just behind our house, you know, there's a banana trees that were bent over and bushes, and there's a little, I don't know what they call that, an oriental fountain, and, and it was full of muck and, and leaves and dirt and tadpoles and uh, when there's a bunch of tadpoles, then you'll get these little garden snakes. And so every time I walk out of my bedroom to the kitchen, I'd look over and I'd see that. And all I could think about is Irma. I go to the kitchen, and by the time I got to the kitchen, I was depressed. Once I got a little food, then I went back, I was okay. But every time until... It, it's like a bolt of lightning hit me about 5 o'clock yesterday. I think it was 5, 4 maybe. Anyway, I said, that's it. And there, there were some clippers out in the back there. And I'm telling you, I put, I put on some old shoes, and I went right out the back, and I grabbed those clippers, and I'm telling you, I was like Ed, Edward Scissorhands. I started... I, I started cutting everything I could get those things around. The good, the bad, it didn't matter. If it was in my way, it was going. I was like a machine. I couldn't stop myself. I even got over the banana trees, and I started to cut on those things, and then I got a bucket. I started dipping out the tadpoles out of that little oriental fountain, and my wife came out and said, you're going to throw your back out. You won't be able to preach tomorrow. And I said, I'm going to keep going. And finally, I stopped. But I didn't stop until I got those weeds out of my eyesight because all I could think about was Irma. Now I want to ask you a question. When, when the Lord says, remember not the former things, why would he say that? One, because it brings pain, distraction, overwhelming feelings and emotions. How can you ever receive the new season, the new blessing, if all you're doing is looking back at all of the bad things. Now let me ask, has any of you driving through Boca or wherever you live 
and you've seen a big mount of, of all of this rubbish and upturned trees, did any of you stop and say, hey, let's take a family portrait in front of this big trash heap. Then we can remember Irma by everybody get out and, and everybody smile, you know, and somebody comes by, would you take a picture of our family in front of this trash heap? No. I don't want to remember Irma. I don't want to go six months down the road and say, oh, look at this wonderful picture of our, our family and all the trash from Irma. Wasn't that a wonderful experience? He says, forget the former things. And some of you, you can't let go of that offense. You can't let go of that failure. You beat yourself up. You keep condemning yourself. And the Bible says there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. What is behind you, let it go. The former things have passed. A new day is coming. A new season is about to break in your life. That's not the promise of Pastor Boykin. That's the word of God. A new season is coming. Now Satan may want to remind you of the old former things, but you need to remind him, I'm ready for the new season and the new promise and the new blessing that's coming my way. Do I hear an amen? amen. I'm telling you, I'm expecting it. I'm expecting it this week. In fact, I'm expecting it today. I'm expecting it before I leave today. You say, what are you expecting? I don't know, but it's going to be a new season. It's going to be good news. It's going to be blessing. It's going to be prosperity. It's going to be peace. It's going to be blessing and gainsaying in my life. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Oh, folks, I want to tell you, I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Psalm 111, verse 1, Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in, and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out all of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. That's the God we serve. Everyone stand. Everyone stand to their feet. Hallelujah. 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 Let me tell you, there are some people right now, you're saying, well, well Pastor, I, I'm retiring, and, and do you know in the kingdom of God, there's no such thing as retirement? Now, I know in business, and though, I understand that, but you don't retire from the kingdom of God. And I have news for you. You're about to enter into a new season of blessing. I said, you're about to enter into a new season of blessing. Those of you who have lost loved ones, those are the former things. You went through the pain. You went through the loss. And you say, I, I just, I, I feel so bad. Listen, God's going to make it up to you. It's going to be better than you would ever imagine. You say, I, I can't see myself going forward after this. Listen to me. God has a plan that you have never even dreamed or thought of. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard what God has planned for those who love him, who love him. And I can promise you, listen to this. I started to say, listen to this young preacher. I'm not that young anymore. Listen to this older preacher. God has something good for you. And revival and blessing is about to break forth in this church. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you because it's been confirmed over and over again. Now listen to me. How many of you right now, you say, Pastor, 
I believe and I need a new season in my life. Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. How many of you believe it's about to happen? Hallelujah. I thank you for the new season. It's already breaking. It's already coming. Lord, we expect it. We wait upon you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You were the God of the impossible. Hallelujah. I want you right now, whatever you are believing God for, I'm going to pray with you. And I want you to claim the victory that you have been waiting for. Some of you right now, you've been waiting to sell something. You've been waiting for the door to open. You've been waiting for a change in your job. Whatever it is, I want you to claim it in the name of Jesus. And listen, I want you, don't you restrict God. You say, Lord, I want you to take me as far as you want. And I am willing to follow you because I can trust you. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray a blessing over every child of God here. This is a new season. Lord, we are entering into a spiritual change, transformation. And the old former things have passed away and we will remember them no more. Father, help us to embrace our future. Help us to embrace the vision and the plan you have for our lives. And it's just beginning. And listen, this is the word God has given me today. Behold, I do a new thing. Even before it unfolds, you will already begin to receive. Already in faith, you will begin to receive it without seeing any manifestation. But in Jesus' name, I want you to declare, I receive it in Jesus' name. I receive it in Jesus' name. And the glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former, saith the Lord. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we bless you. We give you all the glory. We, we thank you for safety, for peace, for prosperity. And Lord, we expect greater things. In Jesus' name, and everyone said amen and amen. God bless you for being with us.